Are you struggling with Kubernetes and NFS persistent volumes? You're not alone. Today, we're diving into a common issue where multiple claims on the same volume can leave you scratching your head. I totally get it. It can be incredibly frustrating when you think you've set everything up correctly, only to find that your claims are stuck in pending status. This is a common scenario for many Kubernetes users. Let's break down the specific situation. One user asked, why is my persistent volume claim stuck in pending when I have a persistent volume available? They want to use an NFS directory for multiple deployments and pods. Sound familiar? Let's explore this together. So what's happening here? When you create a persistent volume with read-write-many access mode, it should allow multiple claims. However, there are some nuances in how Kubernetes handles these claims that can lead to confusion. Stay with me. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to properly configure your NFS persistent volumes and avoid those pesky pending claims. To address the user's issue with multiple claims on the same volume, we first need to clarify how persistent volume and persistent volume claim work together in Kubernetes. The user has correctly set up a persistent volume with read-write-many access mode which allows multiple claims to access the same volume. Next, the user created a persistent volume claim named NFS-PVC-1, which successfully bound to the NFS PV. The capacity displayed as 10 GI is expected because the claim is referencing the entire volume, not just the requested storage size. When the user created a second persistent volume claim named NFS-PVC-2, it remained in a pending state. This happens because the claim is trying to bind to the same persistent volume, which is already bound to NFS PVC-1. In Kubernetes, a persistent volume can only be bound to one persistent volume claim at a time unless it is configured for dynamic provisioning. To allow multiple deployments to share the same NFS resource, the user should consider using a different approach. They can create multiple persistent volume claims that reference the same persistent volume but they must ensure that the claims are not trying to bind simultaneously. Alternatively, they can use a stateful set or a deployment with a shared volume configuration. Finally, if the user deletes NFS PVC-1 and NFS PVC-2 remains pending, it indicates that the volume is still not available for binding. The user should check the status of the persistent volume and ensure that it is not in use by any other claims before creating new ones. Fun fact, did you know that NFS stands for Network File System? It allows you to share files over a network, making it perfect for Kubernetes deployments. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. In summary, you can have multiple persistent volume claims pointing to the same persistent volume, but they must be configured correctly. If you follow these steps, you should be able to use your NFS resource effectively across multiple deployments. And there you have it. With the right setup, your Kubernetes deployments can share NFS resources seamlessly. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe for more tips and tricks on Kubernetes. An alternative approach shared by another user highlights that once a persistent volume claim is bound to a persistent volume, that binding is exclusive. This means that a PVC to PV binding creates a one-to-one -one relationship preventing multiple claims from binding to the same volume. That's all on that answer. Let's take a look at another one. One user suggests considering dynamic provisioning for NFS, but warns that it limits your ability to change default mount options. They experienced issues with small file handling due to the default RSIs and WSIs settings. This led them to create numerous persistent volume and claim pairs as dynamic provisioning creates a one-to-one -one relationship.